Hey guys, I recently had a bring your Nikon to work day and I wanted to share my experience and discuss is the Nikon ZF suitable for shooting weddings and events and portraits? It totally is. Good night. Bye. See ya. <laughs> All right, let me explain. All right, for starters, the Nikon ZF is an excellent retro looking camera, but for events, I actually recommend not shooting in retro. So I personally put the camera in manual mode. I set my ISO dial to C, which means that now to control ISO, I actually use the movie button and the back wheel. The shutter is not controlled by this dial. I actually use the front dial. So it's kind of like shooting it like a regular camera. I have the back for you know my aperture and I have the front for my shutter speed. And then there's only one function button on the front. I use that to control my focus mode if I need to go from a single one to a 3D tracking one. So quickly, I just put my finger there and use the back dial and it switches through the three modes. Now, if you're an aperture priority shooter, what's great, you put it on A here, keep the same thing I said for ISO and shutter speed, and then you have the little exposure compensation dial. So you can completely dial in your exposure. One thing that is important if you're shooting events is to have some kind of backup in case one of the cards goes corrupt on you while you're shooting. So this is great that Nikon implemented a tiny micro SD that could live in there that can maybe collect backups of JPEGs of all the images you're taking. I personally shoot raw to both cards just in case, but what's great is I come home and I take out the SD card and the, you know, just leave the raws on there as a backup until the job is completely done. Now it's kind of debatable, like how reliable are micro SD cards? Like, I don't know, I had one go corrupt on me in a GoPro, but I could have been GoPro's fault. <laughs> so I definitely in the Nikon, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. This is a CF card. So the Nikon Z8 and also the Z62 that I was using uh, has, CF Express cards, which are great, robust, and quick. I think that if that's a concern of yours, it kinda is a little concern of mine for, I would maybe wait for the Nikon Z63 that is rumored and hopefully coming out this year that'll have a lot of the same features, maybe more custom buttons and all that. Uh, but yeah, the SD card situation is very good, but maybe a little worrying with the reliability or the track record of micro SD cards, if that is even an issue, could just be in here. Now for the temple session, I set up flash with a remote on top and I fired off three flashes, no problems, just like if I was using the Z8 or the Sony a7 IV and it didn't miss a beat. Autofocus, fantastic. The color profile I was using was rich tone portrait, although when you're shooting raw, it doesn't matter, but my Lightroom is set up so that when the images come in, they have the rich tone portrait already set up and they're just so easy to edit. Like, right, that's the one thing I love about Nikon is like they come into Lightroom and they have the look that I need for the families that I shoot. They want, they don't want stylized teal and orange. <laughs> they just want beautiful images of their child. So um, rich tone portrait, I use that film thing. Now, if you have a Z8, they actually, there's a firmware update that they, they added rich tone portrait to it and I updated it immediately to get that on here. The images are 24 megapixels, which I think is just perfect for event and wedding photography. So I say that's a mega plus for this. Autofocus was flawless. It basically grabbed the face all the time. I made a video on the best autofocus modes for Nikon. I'll link that up below, but pretty much I used like a little long sliver in the middle and you know, kind of like old school center focus point, but sometimes the sliver picks up an eye, which is bonus. One thing I missed from using the Z8 at events is some sort of like, you know, tactile feel that the camera is taking pictures. Listen, uh -huh. it, you know, you can actually feel the shutter in your hand when you're shooting, which is, I didn't know that I missed it until I was feeling it. <laughs> because the Z8 doesn't actually have a mechanical shutter at all. So you just get a little sound and something else from the firmware update, they fixed the sounds. They actually added extra sounds. So here's my sound on the Z8. All 
All right, so all good, all wonderful. Let's talk about some of the downsides. Downside number one is the grip. If I wish that they made a bigger grip for this called the Nikon Z63. <laughs> like I said, I just did a temple session with it and a little bit of reception. And my hand didn't hurt because I didn't shoot all day, but I, I, it started with the larger lenses like this 28 to 75 to just get a little front heavy. Unless you're this kind of event photographer, this lens, we also used this lens before. This is the uh, 40 millimeter F2, which is super cheap and really good. And uh, yeah, this makes the camera just really easy to handhold. Number two, I would say the next negative is the lack of customizability with the lack of buttons. Uh, I only felt it once when I was at the temple session, we were working indoors and then actually we went outdoors for a few photos. And you know, on the Nikon Z62 that I used to have, I would save two custom buttons. I would save one for flash indoor and then I would save all my settings for if we went outside. When I started to go outside, I realized I'm like, oh, everything is set up for flash. So I actually had to change the white balance. I had to change the shutter speed to make it higher. I raised my ISO to be it. So that's something that my Nikon Z8, for example, is just ready for all kinds of emergencies. For example, one of the custom buttons on the front is just auto everything. Auto ISO has a minimum shutter speed so I can grab action, auto white balance. And that is like my emergency button. I got to grab that moment. It's more important than settings. So that's great to have as an event photographer. I also have backups for my autofocus. Like I have the single one I use all night and then the display back button is my 3D focus, which can track a person. And so this is more like you're in a, you know, top gun spaceship, kind of like you have all your controls the way you love them. And this is kind of like, you know, one thing that I wish was a little better is the blackout when you use the shutter is a little longer than I would uh, like, I guess. If you're shooting natural light or if you're shooting ambient light with no flash, you don't need playback. You could just see your exposure right in the EVF. But if you're using flash and you're bouncing flash, you kind of need to take some test shots and play back without pushing the play button. You can hit the play button, but that just slows me down so much. So I actually have auto review on. And what's cool about auto review is it shows up, hangs out there, but you can actually cancel auto review by just tapping the shutter button. So it can auto review for a second, half a second, and then I can get rid of it. But with the blackout and the auto review, it's just a little, it's fine. Like it's not a deal breaker whatsoever, but it's noticeable as opposed to on the Sony, on the Z8, it doesn't exist at all as a problem, the playback. But on the a7 IV, it's a little better. The last thing I'll say is this camera makes you look so cool. And that's what's important. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.